In today's trading session, the price of gold has hit all-time highs. The previous all-time high we saw back in 2011, and we hit 19, around 1920, I believe. So right now we're about a 1% higher than all-time highs, and we were even higher today at one point. We were at 1937 at the moment. Uh, faded just a little bit from previous all-time highs, but um, again, previous all-time highs was like, what, a few hours ago? So at the moment, uh, we look very, very strong. As you can see, the general trend for the past few days, very, very bullish. Uh, we might be going up a bit too fast at this point, but when you look at uh, what's going on in the rest of the economy, I don't think it's too big a surprise. For instance, if you look at the dollar index, once again, the US dollar is getting completely crushed. The dollar is dead at this point. And this is only against the other you know, global currencies as the dollar index against the euro, the Swiss franc, uh, Canadian dollar, and a few others. It doesn't measure the US dollar against um, you know, commodities or anything like that. If you look at the price of gold against the dollar, um, you know, the general trend, as you can see, uh, massive, massive run up. Now, obviously, if you go back to 2011, you can say that the dollar was uh, much stronger back in 2011 than it is today. And you can say the real value of gold as measured in fiat isn't as high back in the day as it is today. And that's true. But in terms of nominal dollars, this is a very strong milestone for the price of gold. And we now look to be going to $2,000 to test the next level of resistance. Um, really, there is no resistance in that sort of sense. In terms of psychological resistance, naturally, it makes sense that 2,000 is a very, very round number. Likely, we'll be testing 2,000, and if we break above it, we could go a lot higher. There's a lot of reasons for why gold rally these days. The stimulus package, Federal Reserve is trying to kill the dollar at the moment. Um, and as to how they're doing it, just watch this video I found on Wall Street Bets. Simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally, so we, you know, we as a central bank, we have the ability to create money uh, digitally, and we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities, and that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency, and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve banks. As the supply of dollars goes up, you know, everything that's measured in dollars, it, I mean, the weak dollar is just one of the things that has caused this massive, massive run up. But I think the more important aspect to look at is uh, simply the amount of available credit to the markets. You know, we do see a very strong pullback at certain times. Um, for instance, let's say back in, let's pull up the one day chart. Uh, back when the virus first hit, you see a lot of headlines these days that are suggesting uh, concern about coronavirus keeps gold higher or something like that. When, you know, you're scratching your head thinking, as, as I was really, uh, back in March when it's like, uh, you know, coronavirus first became a huge problem. I mean, it, it ran up at first, um, you know, but at some point when the stock market sell-off worsened, we saw a massive, massive sell-off in gold. Not as big as the stock market, obviously, but we fell from around 1700 to uh, 1450 uh, at the lows here. And I think the reason behind that uh, simply was the fact that there was a shortening of credit. Uh, you know, people who lost a lot of money trading stocks needed um, extra credit to maintain their positions or to meet marketing calls, something like that. And so, you know, gold, like any other asset, gets sold off. You know, anything gets sold off, really, in terms of like a, in times of a flash crash, just like what happened to Bitcoin and what happened to Bitcoin today. Um, you know, similar sell-off, similar picture, not as big of a rally as gold, obviously. We're not at all-time highs for Bitcoin. But uh, during the original sell-off, around the same time, Bitcoin got sold off massively, hit a low of 3,800 before we um, rallied over 100% to where we are now. We're now nearing 11,000 on Bitcoin. In any case, I would expect this to continue. Uh, weak US dollar pushes all assets higher. And also, there's, it's not like we're in 2008 again, where people start to default on their five uh, mortgages and people, uh, you know, the banks wouldn't lend to anybody anymore. No, in fact, we've seen quite the opposite with uh, zero interest rates, where, you know, commercial lending at the moment is straight up unprofitable because, you know, at the moment, it's the best, it's the best time to refinance your house. Well, I'm not sure if too many people are buying cars at the moment, but certainly if you haven't lost your job and you haven't taken a pay cut, um, you know, in terms of financing right now, it does seem to be the best time. I don't think you're going to get offered a zero interest rate on buying a car, but you know, definitely a much lower one than if you bought a year ago. And, you know, that really does stimulate spending. Now, does that translate into inflation for the general markets? I think we have to wait some time and see. I'm not sure if the weak U.S. dollar has really translated into consumer markets at the moment. Um, especially since a lot of people are still unemployed. But in terms of what's going on in the financial markets, at the very least, you can immediately see the effects of a weak U.S. dollar 
on a lot of assets, and that's why the stock market continues to go up. Uh, that's why bond yields at the moment are completely dead. I think U.S. 10 years are trading at um, 0.6, or I think less than 0.6 at one point today. Um, so no incentive to be holding bonds. U.S. dollar at the moment is dead, and people are piling in on dividend stocks. They're piling in on tech stocks. They're piling in on gold, silver. You take a look at silver for a moment. Um, again, uh, up 7% today, up over 100% since the lows of March. We haven't seen these levels since 2013. Uh, you know, massive, massive rally. Now, I'm not a macro economist, but I think, um, you know, even as a, as a simple day trader, um, what's happening to the financial markets at the moment, I'm starting to understand. And, you know, you just look at, you know, a lot of the other, um, you know, major asset classes, the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, whatever you want to look at. In general, as long as you're not looking at the banks or the airlines or some similar industries, uh, you know, this picture, um, you know, is commonly seen. You know, sometimes you know you look at silver and this thing shot up a lot more than where it was here. Uh, you look at gold, similar picture. But in general, all assets are up for the general reason that nobody wants to be holding on to the U.S. dollar, no interest rates, and it's getting diluted uh, day by day. And so, and so people want to be holding on to anything else. With all that being said, I thank you very much for listening to my analysis on the price of gold and the U.S. dollar, and I wish you best of luck in your trading. Take care.